Do you have any of these boxes with nails and screws in them? I got a lot of them and they're sort of all over the place. So I need some sort of storage unit to put these things in. Need some wood. Well, I guess I don't have to use wood. MDF or plywood would work, but you know, it seems like I have an abundance of white oak around because of some logs I chainsaw milled. So I'm just gonna roll with that. All right, I've got my boards here. Now they are cut to width, but not linked just yet. Now I want to have a couple of different shelving units for this with three sections each. So I need a top, a bottom, and well, a couple shelves, and then two sides, and ultimately a back. And let me just start cutting. I'm gonna go simple with my joiner here. I'm just gonna cut some channels across the sides for all my pieces to fit into. So I have a data stack in my saw, so I should be able to cut each one with just one pass each. It's also nice that I only need a few cuts, a rabbit along the bottom and then three dados across the width. I got all my slots from my shelves, my top, my bottom. So now I need to make a groove all the way down the end of this for the back panel. So I'm over at the router table. I have a spiral bit inside of it. So I am gonna route that channel from one end all the way down to the other end. Well, I guess I also have to route the top side of the bottom and then the bottom side of the top. I'm sure I won't mix that up somehow. I got the back pin on place and I cut some shelves to make sure that they are flush with the front edge of this. And I've got a cabinet. Now I could have stopped short so you didn't see the cutouts here on the back, but it's shop furniture in my shop. And this is gonna be up against the wall and it's the back of a cabinet. And well, if anybody's creeping and peeping at the back of my cabinet that's up against the wall in my shop, then we got bigger problems. The cabinets are together. Now I did have that space on the back. That's so I could put a French cleat, hang these on the wall if I want to. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to have these interlocking. So I could put them next to each other, but I could also snap them together. Now to do that, I found this. It's a mount for hanging a dartboard on a wall. And I think there could be several uses for something like this in the shop. So I'm gonna take one part of it, mount it onto the top of each cabinet. The other part goes on the bottom. And then I also need two legs for each one. I just gotta make sure that the top of the cabinet is flush with the bracket. I can go over to the table saw and trim that to size. The legs are gonna be a little bit thicker than the circular part of the bracket. That way, whenever I set this down on a table or a countertop, the bracket's not actually touching the surface. Not too bad, huh? I like it. Now, I also went ahead and made little lids for this. So it's just a piece of scrap wood and I put a couple feet on there. So it covers up the bracket so you don't see those. Now, you might be asking yourself, self, why would you need such a thing? Well, because sometimes it's fun just to make cool stuff. That's pretty much it. So now I've got something that I can put my storage on. Now, I did find these right here. These little plastic containers are pretty awesome because one, they stack up really well. Two, they hold a box of all of those screws and nails and that kind of stuff. So one box fits inside of them. Three, lockable lid. And, well, they fit in there too. That looks a little bit nicer. There are some alternatives to using the brackets that I used. You could use dovetails or just some T-track or just skip the brackets all together with and roll with what you got. I have to say that I finally got something to keep those boxes organized. I can stack these things together, hang them on a wall, or keep them separate and just put them back on a counter. Hope you enjoyed this video, and to meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.